Hello everybody and welcome to TansyReviews.com first blind tasting video. So this is technically like episode one for TansyReviews.com. If you haven't been to our website, check it out. We are blind, unbiased, agenda-free ratings of wine, beers, and spirits. We do everything 100% blind. Uh, however, today it's not going to be 100%, it's going to be like 99% because I know that all three of these are Chardonnays, but I don't know where they are from or how much they cost or anything like that. Um, these were all picked out by my beautiful wife. Uh, some of them might be requests from some other people, I don't know, but here we have it, three Chardonnays, we're going to taste them, and then I think she's going to do a recipe and pairing that will go up on the blog this week as well to go with these wines. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get to blind tasting some Chardonnay. Uh, this is going to be Chardonnay number one. You will notice that she's even torn the foils off so that I can't even cheat by looking at the foil. Let's see what wine number one has to offer. Chardonnay is probably the most widely... Uh, consumed white wine on the planet. Chardonnay grapes are grown all over the world in almost every wine producing region. Uh, pretty neutral style wine, but so many flavors can, um, it can impart so many different flavors just on, on the winemaker's technique or even by the terroir, the chalky soils or clay or limestone, which is kind of what Chardonnay prefers. Um, so we're going to dive through these and see what we got here. So the first wine, if you can tell, is kind of a pale straw color, very light color, gold. Can you see that? You see that? All right. Very tropical aromas, kind of some butter coming through. Butter is imparted by malolactic fermentation. Um, a lot of times that's done with done in oak barrels, but it's basically where harsh malic acids are turned into softer lactic acids. Things like think like um, lactose and milk. So this is kind of going to be more of a creamier style Chardonnay. Sometimes Chardonnays can um, be very light, and crisp, and refreshing, like 2% milk. And then when they're going through malolactic fermentation, they can actually be like thick, uh, creamy, buttery wines that are kind of warming and soothing, almost like whole milk. The nose on this wine, a lot of pear, some banana. Mm, on the palate, very fruity wine. Again, some little mango, some tropical fruit characteristics coming through. And then, um, Typically, Chardonnay's got some green apple, but this is almost kind of like a soft New York red apple, like when you kind of bite into a, a soft red, and you kind of see uh, my cheeks are kind of salivating um, from the uh, medium, almost medium plus acidity uh, in this Chardonnay, but overall, really kind of a, a tasty Chardonnay. I'm I would say medium plus body, so not completely a butter bomb or an oat bomb or anything like that, but just tropical and elegant. I, I really kind of like this this wine, actually. This is kind of a, it's perfect because it's fall right now, so it's not too cold, but it's not too hot. This is kind of like kind of that in-between, between crisp and refreshing and kind of like super full-bodied and warm. But wine number one, not a bad Chardonnay at all. So, um, nice. Off to a good start there. Let's try number two, see if... Uh, See if number two can compete. All right. Again, you want to get the color. This is a little bit softer in color, a little lighter, but not too much lighter. Almost the same color, kind of that pale straw. This one's a little bit more pale than wine number one. Um, wine number two, already very different from wine number one. This is probably going to be more of a cooler climate style Chardonnay. Very chalky, almost kind of like a limestone S thing. Not a lot of fruit. Like the first one, the first one was very fruity. This one, the kind of the terroir is kind of leading the charge. More so like the land uh, is leading the charge versus the fruit. And there's that typical green apple. Very nice green apple with a little bit of with just a touch of lime zest. That's a, a very true Chardonnay, very true to the original style. Um, ooh, and it's kind of got this almost like a sun-kissed raisin style finish. Um, very smooth, uh, a little bit more acidic than the first one, a little bit lighter body than the first one. But again, that's a pretty good Chardonnay right there. Not a lot of malic lac malolactic fermentation done on this one. Mm. That was a pretty 
tasty Chardonnay. Really like that one. Not bad. All right, well, I mean, two for two so far. Let's see what number three has for us. All right, again, about the same color, pale straw. Getting a little bit of drippage there. And then here we go with the oak. So we talked about the first one having a little bit of that malolactic fermentation uh, and a little bit of oak, a little bit of oak aging. But this guy right here, I think as Gary V would say, probably an oak monster. Like on the nose, tons of oak. I even get like a little bit of like burnt wood, a little bit of sourness, a little sour green apple. Very oaked, a lot of oak. Um, and when you have a lot of oak and you have a lot of that lactic acid, it really starts to get that buttery popcorn thing going on. But this right here, it doesn't really, I mean, the oak is definitely there. There's no denying that. Is it offensive? Not really. It, it's not overly offensive. Um, but is it there and is it in an abundance? Yes, it is. And it's kind of got this almost a green kind of a, a grassy kind of finish. It's not terrible, um, but it's, again, you know, that's just, if that's your style. This one, though, it does have that kind of a greenness to it, so it's kind of like almost like underripe, uh, maybe like an underripe melon type thing, maybe like, you know, like a green melon, you're getting close to the rind, or, or like a watermelon, when you start getting near the green part of the watermelon, mixed with a little bit of a lactic, you know, butteriness, so. Probably not too too expensive a wine there, but anyway, I have rated them. I'm gonna go with number two first, and then I'm gonna go with number one second, and then we'll put third third. So let's go ahead and see what these let's see what these wines are. All right, wine number one. Oh, Chardonnay from the Pays d'Oc in France. Uh, this is from southern France. Really nice. Very classic white wine, old world in style from the get-go. That was a terroir-driven wine and we talked about it, where a lot of times your new world wines, your California, which is probably what is going to be the second one, maybe you're, maybe even Australia. But uh, the difference between old world and new world is that the French Chardonnays or the old world style Chardonnays, um, they tend to be more driven by the land that they're grown in and, and true to what the farmer had, in, had envisioned with that grape. Whereas the new world, you know, they kind of pick the grapes and then it's kind of what, what is the winemaker versus what does the farmer want to do with those grapes? Does he want to add all these, you know, uh, oak, oak aging techniques and things like that. So as this wine was pure to the farmer and it was really good fruit and a classic Chardonnay, great wine pairing Chardonnay. I have no idea how much it costs. How much did that cost? $20.99. $20.99. Excellent. $20.99. Save that for Thanksgiving. It's coming up. That'd probably be a good one right there. All right. Wine number two. Definitely going to be New World. It was very uh, fruit driven. And it is Stag's Leap Napa Chardonnay. Again, very good. I gave this one 90 points blind. Uh, I happen to give this one 91 points if you want to look at the bags. Um, and then the third one, we'll talk about the third one here in just a second, but 2013 Stag's Leap District from Napa, California. Really, really good. Just a little bit different in style. Um, than the French Chardonnay. So really good. How much was this? $31.99. $31.99. So $20. And then we got a $30 one. And then this one right here is not my all-time favorite. I'm going to go with about 84 points on this one. It was almost 85, but again, just a little bit too much butter and a little too much underripe fruit. Let's see what it is. It's the Angeline from Monterey County. Um, I believe that's a Courtney Benham wine. Benham wine. Not sure. It's the Angeline Reserve. The Angeline Reserve. Monterey County... 2015. How much did that cost? 1799. 17.99. Again, um, that is just my take on these three wines. Really cool lineup though. Um, so we've kind of gone all the way to 20 and below. Uh, there is so many different styles of Chardonnay out there. I would say the Chardonnay is kind of like the Cabernet Sauvignon as, as the Cabernet can kind of be considered the king of red wine grapes. Uh, so the Chardonnay can be uh, the king of the white wine grapes. If you're not out there drinking Chardonnay, you're totally missing out. And it is that time of year uh, with Harvest coming up, one of my favorite movies is Bottle Shock. It's all about Chardonnay, so you can go take a look at that. And um, 
Anyway, guys, check out our website. All these reviews will be up on our website, kind of individually written out. We also have lots of T-shirts and stuff. We've got uh, we got new girls shirts in. Uh, Red wines matter with our little uh, logo on the back. We've got black IPAs matter for you beer geeks out there. And then we got little white wines matter. This is a girl shirt here. And then, uh, of course, the old classic Sadie's Pock and Pear Venom. If you want peace, prepare the wine. We also got some koozies. But remember, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter the color of the grape skin. It's about what's inside. And it's about the juice that it produces, whether that makes you happy or not. So get out there, branch out, try new things. Hit up our website. Look us up on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And uh, let us know what you're drinking. And, hey, maybe you think I'm crazy and you uh, totally thought that this wine was the best and this one was the worst, but I would love to hear that because I am simply one man's palate. All right, guys, until next time, cheers.